everyone. How are you doing today? My name is Alan. I'll be your moderator for today. Uh, we're very excited to show you the work we have done to improve your experience when developing for Teams. Um, I may pop in here and there during the presentation with some of your questions, um, but we will have time at the end also uh, to take those. So, so keep putting them in and posting them along the way. And um, yeah, we'll get those at the end also. Okay, let's get started. Uh, Karthik, over to you. Thank you, Alan. Good morning, everybody. My name is Karthik, and I'm a PM on the Developer Lifecycle team on Teams. I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here today to speak to you about getting started building for Microsoft Teams. I'm here to talk to you about how you can deliver awesome collaboration experiences by building out Microsoft Teams apps. Okay, before we get started, let's take a quick minute to go over our agenda today. First up, we're going to cover designing a Teams app. From there, we'll move on to some exciting new features we're introducing that will streamline your app building experience. Once you've built and tested your app, you want to publish it. Publishing is the, uh, is the next topic on our list. And finally, I'll provide a quick snapshot of what's top of mind for me with respect to developer tooling heading into the second half of the year. And please remember, we do have 15 minutes saved at the end of the session for Q&A. Please post your questions in the channel so we can queue it up at the end and Alan will bring them to my attention uh, once we get started with the Q&A session. Okay, great. Uh, let's get started, shall we? So <clears throat> before we really start about building out an app, uh, I'd like to just uh, hit pause right now and talk to you a little bit about designing your app. And to design your Teams app, it's really important that you first understand uh, the extensibility points or the capabilities that Teams allows your apps to inject into the Teams native client. So there are four extensibility points that I'm going to touch on. There are tabs, messaging extensions, bots, and connectors. Tabs are like uh, hosted experiences. They're like websites that are embedded into the Teams client. They can leverage the Teams SDK to tap into your user profile and provide rich uh, data from your Microsoft 365 stack in your hosted experience. Messaging extensions allow you to insert rich content into a message as you're typing it out. Uh, bots, I think you guys all know what those are. Uh, you can have conversations with them in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, flow or in a team channel. And connectors are a great option if you're looking to inject uh, an external notification into your channel. Okay, once you have a good understanding of what's possible when extending a Teams app, you should take a step back and think about the app that you're trying to create. Think about your users, think about the problems they're having, and break those problems down to a collection of user stories. As a user, and I'm trying to blah, blah, blah. If, see if you can map those stories to Teams capability that you can extend. Uh, let's take an example here. As a Teams user, I need uh, my channels to receive notifications. Uh, that doesn't sound to me like the user really needs to interact too much with uh, the information that we're providing to them in the Teams client. So connectors sound like a very good uh, use, uh, one a very good solution for that particular user story. So that's one approach that we could take to meeting this particular user story. Uh, it's, <clears throat> it's really important, though, that you remember during this process that really there is no right or wrong answer. Some of this is uh, subjective, and maybe it's very obvious that there is a best way to solve a particular problem, but really there could be one, two, three, or multiple solutions to the same thing. So if your app requires that you use just tabs or tabs in conjunctions with messaging extensions, uh, that's really fine, but it's really important that you sit down, think about it, work through your user scenarios, maybe draw some wireframes and take it from there. Okay, I know that some of you may not be very fond or familiar with this process uh, unless you have a PM background. <laughs> uh, so we do have some documentation to help you get started on this journey here. So please take out our uh, developer platform documentation for guidance. There is an article called to map your use cases to team app capabilities, and that should be enough to get you going. With that, I am just absolutely thrilled today to announce the Microsoft Teams toolkit for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. These are extensions that we're bringing into the Visual Studio Marketplace that's going to make it easier than ever to build your Microsoft Teams app from Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Let's take a quick snapshot. Let's take a quick peek under the covers and see what the extension looks like in Visual Studio Code. And here it is. 
we are bringing everything you need to one place, all of the tools that you need to get up and running with Teams development. I'm assuming that some of you may have already done some Teams development already. Uh, that's great, but I'm also assuming that most of you here might be new to developing Teams apps. So let me just walk you down uh, what you're looking at right now. This is the Visual Studio Code Editor, and uh, this is the Microsoft Teams extension that is open in the Visual Studio Code Editor. We're bringing the documentation, the project generation, and app configuration that you need to build out your app into one place. If you're happy with your app, there is a validation checker in here for you, as well as a means to publish your app to the uh, to your organization's app catalog or to the public team store directly from the extension. Okay. So let's say you're a developer and you're coming into the extension for the very first time, and this is your first time building a Teams app. What you're gonna wanna do is naturally create a new project. There's a start new project button, and when you hit start new project, you have to answer some basic questions about the type of app that you are trying to create. This is where going through that exercise of designing an app comes in handy because when you're asked, hey, would you like to create a tab bot or messaging extension, you'll have a rough idea of what you're trying to build, and this is a great starting point to help you on that journey. So, <clears throat> Alan, any questions so far on the thread? Yes, yeah, sorry, there I was I was muted. Here, I'm back. We did uh, one big question where, where we're seeing a lot of, there's a couple big ones. Uh, one one is uh, people are trying to find the Visual Studio extension and just wanted to ask about, about the uh, release of that extension. Sorry, can you repeat that? Because uh, we can see the Visual Studio Code extension is out there, but where's the Visual Studio one? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so very important thing I like to call out is the Visual Studio uh, extension is right around the corner. We <laughs> it'll be uh, released in preview shortly after the Visual Studio Code extension, but rest assured they're both on their way. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, you will notice that the text here says that you can generate scaffolding or import existing projects. You don't see the button in this preview UI right now, but there is an import button. So if you have an existing project, all you really need to do is add that folder to your Visual Studio Code workspace, point the tools to your manifest.json file. Uh, but those of you who have existing projects know what that is. And all of the tools will pick it up and be able to, you'll be able to take advantage of the richness of the Microsoft Teams toolkit uh, with your existing projects. Now, once you generate a new project, uh, we create the scaffolding for you, and you can see that we also bring up uh, getting started, readme documentation on the right. All you have to do is follow these steps to a T, and you will have your app up and running in the Teams client. And if you look on the left side of the screen, you will see that there is a .publish folder. That is the folder where your two icon files and a manifest JSON file, for those of you who are familiar with those pieces, uh, reside. And uh, we will be automatically generating the zip file that the Teams client needs to ingest, install the app onto the Teams client. Uh, hey, I have, Karthik. Yeah. Oops, sorry. One no, quick no, question on. I, I saw from coming in. Um, the question was, what if you have an existing Teams project, which you something you've already been working on? Um, how would you use our tools with that? Yep, great question. Uh, I touched on that just briefly now, uh, but just to reiter reiterate, there will be an import button on this view here. So in the command bar view on, to, on the left, there will be an import button and you will just have to add your folder to your current uh, Visual Studio workspace and point the tools to your existing manifest.json file and the tools will pick it up. Okay, moving on to, uh, Onboarding with ease, uh, I touched on this. We just finished talking about your uh, publishing package that's in the .publish folder. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with Teams app development, you know that what you do to install an app onto Teams is to take your publishing zip file. The zip file will contain your manifest.json and two icon files, and you install that in the Teams client. Uh, it can be somewhat cumbersome. so. We've done some work to make this a little bit more intuitive when you're working in an IDE or a code editor like Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, we have a short little video here to show you what that experience looks like. Uh, let's get started.
So here the developer is creating a brand new project and the name of this app is going to be Employee Pulse. They're going to create a tab-based app and the type of tab that it is will be a personal tab. We're gonna keep it nice and simple for now. Ta-da, there you have the tools open up. Scaffolding is there. Documentation is on the right. And uh, next to get your tab up and running, all you really need to do is install your packages by running yarn install. Uh, this has been sped up to save you the boredom of having to wait for that to install. Now we're gonna start our server. Now we simply hit run from Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, uh, Microsoft Teams will launch in Employee Pulse will be available for you to install to your Teams client. So we've streamlined the app installation process so it's much simpler. And as you can see, uh, the sample app that we provide, the scaffolding, will be grabbing your user context and displaying your name to show you that it is in fact a Teams app and not just a random website. Okay, uh, moving on. So the if you're familiar with App Studio, the view that you're looking at now might be familiar to you. It's called the Manifest Editor in App Studio. Uh, but in a nutshell, uh, once you're, as you're building your app, you're also going to want to configure things like, for example, the name of the app, the description as it will appear in the Teams company, company store or your organization's app catalog. You'll want to register your bot endpoints, your tab endpoints. All of that is done in the project configuration tab of the Microsoft Teams toolkit. And if you notice this drop down right here where it says development and the picker, uh, this is going to simplify the process of managing an app that you're building across multiple environments. For example, you are developing a tab on your machine. Your tab endpoints will say local host. Teams client is looking for a local host URL when it's run when your app is running in Teams. When you have that app in production, chances are it's not, or I seriously, I seriously hope it's not running on local host. Uh, it should be hosted somewhere, and your endpoints will have to change. Uh, right now, how developers are getting around this problem is by having multiple manifest file, with the ability to switch between environments from your configuration view. You don't have to do that anymore. We've abstracted that away. So it's easier than ever to configure your app across multiple environments. Okay, you've configured your app, you've built it, you're happy with it. Uh, you'd like to publish it to Partner Center. Before you submit, before you can publish an app to the Teams public store, you have to submit it for approval in the Microsoft Partner Center portal. When you submit it for uh, validation, it goes through, your app goes through a series of validation checks. We have front loaded some of these checks so that they are available to you in the extension. So you can save yourself time by not having to go to Partner Center, upload your app and wait for some of that validation information to come back. Okay, you've now let's say you validated your app, all of the checks pass and you are ready to go live with your app. It's very exciting, you need to publish it, great. There are two places you can publish it to. You can publish it to your organization's app catalog so that your app is only available to the people in your company, or you can publish it to the Teams public store so that anybody out there who has a Teams client can find it and install it. Uh, we will be coming up very shortly with a feature to publish your app to your organization's app catalog directly from the Microsoft Teams toolkit. So when you hit that first button there that says, publish the Contoso App Store, or in your case, whatever the name of your company is, uh, you will be presented with a dialogue that asks if you're ready to submit your app. All of the configuration information will be taken directly from the configuration tab, and it will be sent to your organization's Teams admin for their approval. Remember, your app cannot be published unless your uh, Teams admin consents to it being published to your users, but it will be there for them in their Teams admin portal waiting approval. If you are an independent software vendor who is publishing it to the Teams public store, hitting that second link will take you to Partner Center to complete the process. All right, exciting news. I think some of you have already uh, been privy to this information. We announced this yesterday, but the Microsoft Teams toolkit for Visual Studio Code is available right now. Uh, so I urge you to go and try it out right now.
the <laughs> link is aka.ms-teams-toolkit and it is available in preview. So folks, this is in preview. It's uh, there. Are, it's not going to be perfect and that excites me. I'm really, really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it, the bugs you find, and more importantly, the problems that you have that we're not solving. That's what we really would like to hear. Uh, the Microsoft Teams Toolkit, the Marketplace webpage, there are tons of ways for you to reach out to myself and also to Alan. So please, please don't be shy. Reach out to us. Let us know what you want. Uh, this will not be as good as we want it to be unless you guys share your feedback. So please, please do be do engage us. And I just wanted to say that the Visual Studio one is very close behind. I just held it back a little bit. That's all my <laughs> fault. I wanted to make sure, you know, things were nice and smooth for you guys when it comes out. So it's, you know, you'll be able to play with that, you know, within the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So, so for the Visual Studio fans, uh, be patient. It's right around the corner. But if you are in the Visual Studio Code world, download it now. Try it out. Let us know what you think. All right. Uh, looking ahead. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about some things that I've, we have lined up for the second half of the year. Uh, so first up is deeper integration with Microsoft Graph. Really, the richness of building a Teams app lies in its ability to tap into the data available in Microsoft Graph. And we'll be making it easier than ever to tap into that very essential part of the M365 platform from our tools. Uh, hosting. You've built an app, but it's running on localhost. You need to deploy it and host your services somewhere. Our team is hard at work figuring out the best possible way to make it as simple as possible. We just want you to hit a button and have it uh, out into the world, out into the wild, securely, safely, and accessible to your users. And lastly, we really believe in building a developer community here. Uh, I think I just mentioned that we've made it super easy for anybody who's using our tools to engage with myself, Alan, and the rest of the developer lifecycle team. And to that end, a Microsoft, develop, Microsoft Teams toolkit will be open sourced so you can customize it to better meet your business requirements or those of your customers and clients. Uh, so that is it for me, folks. Uh, and before we get to Q&A, I do want to recommend some sessions that anyone attending this one here uh, might want to take a look at. First up, we have Int 104, building apps for teams with low code, no code tools. Uh, if you're a low code, no code tools developer, I urge you to check out uh, Int 104 by my good colleagues, Loki and Efesa. Uh, Int 105, building zero friction apps with Teams and uh, with SSO and Graph. Really, you should all be attending this one if you are at all interested in building uh, apps that contain user data, team data, information about users, any information about a user that lives in Microsoft Graph. Attend that session. It'll be incredibly helpful. Nick Kramer is running that, and it's incredibly useful. And also definitely check out Int 109 by Saeed Akhtar, reaching millions of users building apps with the Microsoft Identity Platform. So once again, Microsoft, we run on trust, and uh, your identity is something we take very seriously, and it's important that you learn how to use it responsibly and use it effectively. Check that one out. And that is it. I believe we have some time for Q&A now. <laughs> Alan, I yes, hope we, got, uh, we have a lot we got of exciting lots questions. Lots of good questions, okay, lots of good questions here. Here's, Here's the first one. This one I could probably take. Um, when we use this from Carlos M. When we use tabs, what's the underlying underlying browser edge? Question mark. You know, thanks in advance. Um, so uh, Teams is written in Electron, and uh, Electron is based on Chromium. So the tabs that you see being rendered is uh, based on Chromium slash Chrome. For that question there. All right. Thank you for that one. Let's see the next one. Um, Nandeep N, can we use NPM instead of Yarn to install packages in VS Code generated project? And I think we talked about that too. We kind of went back and forth of like, you know, should we go NPM or Yarn? So, so I think you definitely can install, use NPM and Yarn is just helpful, you know, just a different way. So we, we had the, the different options going back and forth. So, and I think as we, we talked before is like uh, being able to make Part of this open source in a way, so being able to plug in your stuff into our UX and tools, you know, you would have the ability to make it more customizable for whatever projects that you're trying to do. Also, yeah, so Alan raises a good point. So the scaffolding that we give you, this is just our recommendation. You can tweak it any way you'd like and use it 
uh, in a way that suits you and suits your customers, your users. Uh, yeah. This is kind of another follow-up type of question on that. So from Henning E, uh, how does this scaffolding relate to Yo Teams? So I'll let you take that one first. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. It's kind, of, uh, it's kind of based on the open sourcey thing, but right. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, that is an uh, a open source Microsoft Teams app generator. Uh, the scaffolding is uh, that we provide the quick start scaffolding as part of this is a, com a different tool entirely uh, built by us at Microsoft. Uh, and if you're a fan of the Yo Teams gener generator, I urge you to keep using it. Generate your project open up our uh, Microsoft Teams toolkit in Visual Studio Code, add that folder to our project, and just point our tools at the manifest uh, JSON in, uh, that was created for you as part of that generator, and you'll be able to use all the goodness of uh, that existing generator with our Teams toolkit. Or you can even try building your own extension that taps into that. So the world is your oyster. <laughs> Right, right. So we're just kind of just pulling in existing projects. So if they want to create it through a generator or I think as we talked earlier about open sourcing and maybe these generators, we can just plug right in into, you know, our whole system and even have a UX based on your, you know, if, for those who know about Yeoman generators and stuff, they ask you questions, you know, in command line prompt. So maybe uh, we were even thinking of, you know, make those visually and have UX based around those questions. So lots of different options we're thinking to make this easier for you guys and, and open as possible. So, all right, let's go on to another question. Thank you for that question. Let's see, Justin B, is there a way to publish using Azure DevOps? Uh, can I ask a follow-up question if it's possible? Um, uh oh, <laughs> I'll pretend, I'll pretend to be that person. <laughs> uh, sorry, it wasn't very clear if the uh, question was about whether uh, whether the question was about publishing your app services to Azure or uh, whether the I question maybe was about it, maybe it's about hosting it. Maybe that's okay. if, if the question you know, is about hosting, what I'm personally doing right now because we had we don't have a solution baked into the Teams toolkit is I have the Azure Tools uh, extension pack installed in Visual Studio Code, and I use those tools to publish my app services to Azure. Uh, if the question was about publishing your app to the public app catalog or your organization's cap app catalog, catalog uh, that feature is part of the toolkit. Uh, it's not part of the preview, uh, but I <laughs> like the Visual Studio extension is right around the corner. All right, thank you for that question. Let's see, uh, Niels H. When will single sign-on be available for tabs? Ooh, that's a Ooh. <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I don't so we almost had the check date. mark was in there. We removed it last minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, so, was the question about our extension in particular, or was it about in general? When will the feature GA? I I think it's like when will be yeah pretty much available. I I, I think we kind of know. Do you know? I I, I don't know have an exact date for when. Uh, Tab SSO is going to be generally available on Teams platform, uh, but it's absolutely critical for us. It's going to be part of a very uh, of a release that we'll have an update. We'll have to the extension very shortly. Right. It's it's in developer preview um, right now. So what well, in our scaffolding for VS Code, we actually had a checkbox say include SSO in your tab, and we just we wanted to make sure the documentation and everything was nice and clean for you. It works great when you turn on developer preview and everything, but we just wanted to, you know, uh, tighten it up just a little bit. So with yeah. the instructions, quite a few you know, hurdles to overcome to yeah. get up and running with the SSO scenario. So we have to make sure our documentation for that is just rock solid. Yeah, whenever you drag auth into everything, it just your setup steps just explode and <laughs> everything confusing. But so, but That's we want to make problems we're trying to solve actually. So <laughs> yeah, we want to make you know maybe automate some of the steps or something for you, but. You know, we'll have that out soon because that's a really important piece. All right. Ah, here's one. Christopher V, for the three project types shown, which one would you use for a connector type Teams app? So connectors in Teams are Office connectors. Uh, you wouldn't be using our tools to develop the logic. For example, you wouldn't be creating the code using our extension to create your webhook logic. So you would uh, probably going, be going into your Office connector portal, creating your connectors there, 
and then from App Studio in your Teams client, registering that connector with the Teams client and with your tenant uh, so that you can receive incoming notifications. So connectors are a little bit funny. They are slightly different from the rest of uh, our apps in that uh, we don't necessarily like build our own services that are running uh, so much as just hook into a uh, M365 connector. All right, thanks for that question. All right, Rohit P, uh, which languages are supported to build Teams apps? Uh, great question. So uh, I don't think I touched on this earlier, but here is a very critical piece of information about building the Teams apps. Teams apps, whether they're tabs or bots or messaging extensions, are just web services. So you can write them in any question, in any language uh, that you want, using any frameworks that you'd like, that you're most comfortable with. So what I urge you to do is do what you like to do. But our quick start scaffolding is in vanilla JavaScript with React on the back end, on the front end, and Node Express on the back end. Uh, we also have C Sharp scaffolding coming right around the corner. And that will be available as well. Uh, and if you would like to create your own project generation wizard that will create code in TypeScript using Angular or whatever else, you can totally, totally do that. But remember, uh, all you really need to do to build a tab is go and build a website. So let's say you like Python, go and build a Django page. And the part about your website that makes it a Teams app is you have to use our Teams JavaScript SDK. And if uh, you are accessing that website from the Teams client, the SDK can detect that, can detect what the session is and get lots of information about the user from the user context running of that session. So that's where you get the richness of a Teams app. Great okay. question. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, this one's an interesting one from Garog S. Um, can we host an app on premises and use it as a tab when we are connected to the VPN? Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm kind of thinking. Uh, I'm thinking that should be fine, right? Because it, it just wouldn't be load. I, and I if you build your, it out, but all you really yeah. need to do is give it a uh, in your app configuration and a manifest JSON. As long as the tab URL is one that your Teams client can reach, it should work. So if that URL is accessible from a computer on your in, uh, in your internal network, then it should be fine. Right. Yeah, I think. But I haven't tested it out myself. Yeah, I, I think that's totally possible. Totally. Um, let's see. I'll find the next question here quick. Um, all right. This one I've heard this a couple times. Is it fine to provide an API to do side loading? So, <laughs> yeah, I, I heard this is from some other yeah. chats. That's from Alexandra, uh, Alexandra N. Um, That's the million I dollar know. question. I, so. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some security issues around that, but I think people were kind of this morning I saw in a chat being like, mm, why not? You know? <laughs> but so I our answer to that fine. is definitely go check out the uh, building zero friction apps with, on Teams with SSO and Graph <laughs> and yeah, ask and bug, to create and that question. He'll be yeah. able to provide a better answer than we will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me see. We're about ready to wrap up here. Uh, let's see if I have ah, one last question for you guys, uh, from you guys. Uh, Stephen V, um, NGROC required, or can we connect the Teams app connected to localhost? So we kind of touched that a little bit. Um, so I don't know if we have some secret stuff we're talking about for NGROC. Uh, we should probably mention the F5 experience where we hit run from Visual Studio Code and the app launched uh, in the Teams client. Uh, that won't require NGROC for tabs. You will still need it for bots and messaging extensions. Uh, right. That F5 experience isn't available uh, right now. We need an update to be pushed out to the Teams client. Expect that sometime in June. Once that is out, expect F5 to work. And at that point, you won't need NGROC for tabs. But you'll continue to need it for uh, bots and messaging extensions. But we're also looking at ways to uh, circumvent <laughs> the need to run a tunneling service. So uh, great question. And thanks for asking. All right. All right. So that was our last question. So. Uh, just to wrap things up, we do have want to plug. There's a Twitch session going on. I forgot the link. We'll we'll post the link out there. Hopefully, 
in the chat uh, for a three hour coding session using it's our AKA tool. It's aka.ms slash teams development. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, good. All right, just want to thank everybody for coming and asking your questions. We did get all your questions in the feed so we can uh, address those as well in other ways. So appreciate everyone's feedback and hope you have a good day. Thank you folks.